So last class, we talked about finding the density. What is density? How do I do the conversion? And so now we're gonna talk about if I'm finding a number, if I'm taking a measurement, how many decimal places? Now, whenever I'm writing a number, I'm gonna be writing it in one of two ways. Either it's gonna be I'm reading a piece of equipment and I'm writing the number based off of reading the equipment, or I'm doing math, like in our last problem, and after I've done my math, I'm writing a number down. We're gonna talk about when you do your calculations, how many decimal places, that's related to sig figs in a little bit. First, we wanna talk about if I'm just using a piece of equipment and it's not digital, it's not like a digital balance or the thermometer that just tells me the number. I'm reading something and I have to figure it out. Now, this piece of equipment here that you can see is a graduated cylinder. And in this graduated cylinder, my liquid kind of makes this little curve. This is called a meniscus. And we'll talk in the spring semester about why it makes this curve and you know why some are more curved, some are flattened, those kind of things. So if you're gonna kind of have a smaller cylinder, then you're gonna see this meniscus pretty, pretty well, okay? So the way that we read the graduated cylinder is we don't read it at the top of the water line. We read it at the bottom where the meniscus is, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to take a second and I want you to tell me what you think this number is. So if I said, how much liquid is in, in this graduated cylinder, what would you say? So we see the four, we see the five. It's gotta be somewhere in between four and five. Now, let's look at our hash marks. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here's the fifth, here's the sixth. So it's actually, here I can draw maybe, you can see it. Maybe I should do that in a different color. Here we go. So if you notice, this line, the bottom of our meniscus, is between the fifth and sixth hash mark. So what that means is our number is between 4.5 and 4.6. But we don't just write 4.5 or 4.6 because it's not exactly here or here. We have to write another decimal place. And so this last one is a guess place, okay? So it's somewhere in between, and then that's kind of close to being right in the middle. So you could write 4.55, and that would be completely fine. You could write 4.56. Honestly, any number that is 4.512, 4.59 would be correct, because this last place is your guess. So anytime you're reporting a number from any piece of equipment, you write every number that you know for certain, these are your certainty places, and your last one is your estimated or your guess place. So that's how many decimal places you write. You write everything you know, and then you guess the last place. So in this case, we write two decimal places. Okay, so we've got our known and our estimated place. So this is how we figure out how many decimal places to write. Now we also have to write after this the unit. This is our number, then we have to write the unit. This is either gonna be in milliliters or liters or something of that nature. And if it's on a piece of equipment, it will tell you. Okay? Now, this piece of equipment goes to two decimal places, but they don't always do that. So let's look at some other ones. So here, trying to weigh this nut here, and I look here, and if I'm measuring it in grams, I've got zero, one, two. So I know it's between one and two, but I don't know what the next number is. So the next place is going to be my guess place, my estimated. So here I say 1.2, because I don't know if it's 1.1 or 1.9 or what it is. I just know it's in between one and two. So this only has one decimal place. Now I put my nut on a different balance, different scale, and I look here and I see 
that it's at. We've got here, it's got zero and it's got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So they go by point ones. And then based on where I'm at, so this is where my marker is, I'm between one and two. I know that for a fact. But then I'm also between point one, point two, point three, between point two and point three. So I know the one and the point two for sure. But I don't know if it's point two one or point two nine, so I have to guess. And so my estimated reading would be 1.27. So this goes to two decimal places where this one only goes to one. So that's how many decimal places you have to write is based on how many uh, markings you have on your piece of equipment. Okay. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why does it matter how many decimal places are right? It has to do with being accurate. Now, you may have heard the word accurate and precision used before, and a lot of people will use the terms accuracy and precision like they mean the exact same thing, but they don't. So let's talk about what those two mean. And the best way to think about these two terms is in the sense of a target. So I'm going to draw a couple of targets for you. My, I am not an art person, so my little circles here might not be the most uh, symmetric. Definitely I'm more of a math science person. All right, so I got three targets here. Now, let's say I've got some spots, because I shot some of them. All right, hopefully you can see that. So let's talk about the difference between accuracy and precision. So accuracy is how close your number is to the known or correct value. So how close are you to the known or the correct value? Precision is how close multiple determinations are to each other. Okay? So how accuracy is how close is to the expected. Precision is how close to each other. So let's look at each of these targets and talk about them in terms of accuracy and precision. So if I have a target, where do I want to hit a target? I want to hit it right there in the middle, right? But in this case, all of my shots were over here. Now, am I accurate? So let's think about this in the sense of high, medium, and low. So I'm not in the middle, but at least I made it on the target. So I would say that's medium accuracy. Now, let's talk about precision. My shots are all kind of grouped together. So what would that be? Would that be high, medium, or low precision? It's pretty high. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about what this means in a second. Let's do the next one. So let's talk about our accuracy. I want to shoot in the middle, and where did I do it? I got one shot, and my one shot went right here in the middle. So that's really high accuracy. So awesome. Now let's talk about the precision. Precision is how close my numbers, my shots, would be in this example to each other. I only have one shot. So can I talk about precision? No. I can't talk about precision because... I can't talk about how close together they were. So here, there's no precision. Can't talk about it. All right, last one. I got a bunch of my shots right here, and they're all up on the bullseye. So what is my accuracy? I'm trying to get to the bullseye, and I'm pretty close to it, so that's pretty high. And they're all grouped together. So this would be high accuracy and high precision. So let's talk about what these mean. If I have medium accuracy but high precision, so I get the same answer every single time, but it's not quite right. This is usually what we call systematic error. So this is systematic.
systematic error. So this would be in the case of maybe you're using a balance and it's not calibrated. So you're using the piece of equipment the same every single time, but your piece of equipment isn't measuring correctly. Okay? So good precision, poor accuracy. Or this could be that you were reading the graduated cylinder the same every single time, but you did it wrong the same every single time. So it could be the instrument's fault, or it could be that you're consistently doing something wrong over and over and over again. All right, high accuracy, no precision. This is a very scientific term called luck. You did it once, you got it right, and that's it. Okay? We don't really do this in chemistry or in science in general. If I get a high accuracy number, I have to do it again and again and again to make sure that I just didn't get lucky that it's going to be consistent. Okay? So in science, what we want is we want this guy. We want high accuracy and high precision. So a lot of times if you're doing an experiment, you're going to do multiple trials. You're going to try to do it again and again and again to show that your procedure, your technique is good because you were able to get the same answer every time and you were able to get the correct answer every time. Okay? So that's the difference between accuracy and precision. We want to be able to get the correct answer, and we want to be able to get that correct answer every single time. All right, on our next video, we're going to talk about how do I figure out how many decimal places to go if I'm doing my math? Like, for example, here. How many decimal places do I do here? And that's something called significant figures. And we'll talk about that in our next lecture.